I'm James Chow, host of The China Current. In my last video, I told you the story of Guy Fawkes, the English Catholic who tried to kill King James I using gunpowder. Perhaps less well known are the origins of gunpowder, the chemical compound also used for fireworks that light the sky and our imaginations all around the planet. I love the fireworks in Hong Kong, London, and Sydney that ring in the new year and give us hope in happy and less optimistic times. Tai Guo Qiang is a US based artist who is best known for his exhibitions at the Met and Guggenheim, but also for the fireworks display at the 2008 Beijing Olympics. Giant footprints stomped across the skyline, paving the path towards the Burr's Nest Stadium as the final countdown to the lighting of the Olympic flame began. It mesmerized a nation and brought into focus the origins and journey of the fireworks we enjoy today. The birthplace of gunpowder and fireworks is China, with texts confirming their recorded existence through successive imperial dynasties, especially the Tang dynasty, then the Song dynasty, when they really gained new popularity. These were not the only inventions. Paper, ink, printing, and the compass were other such creations that were born in these important periods, all of which have changed the world. But if China is the home of fireworks, then the home within that home is Liuyang, today a county-level city that is home to 200,000 Hakka people who migrated here in the Ming and Qing dynasties. In a much earlier edition of Liuyang's story, there lived an alchemist named Li Tian, who is credited with combining the three primary ingredients that give us gunpowder and thus fireworks. He used bamboo, another story we've told here on the China Current, as a form of tube through which he funneled and stored the chemicals, mixing them in combination and creating the explosive compound we still use today. It's amazing that what one person achieved then in the Tang Dynasty, roughly 600 to 900 AD, could still be so relevant and important in the 21st century. Certainly, gunpowder has had its uses in ways that have worked against the interests of humanity, but fireworks are associated with celebration and happiness, whether you're in China or anywhere else in the world for that matter. In China, we use fireworks, most notably during the Spring Festival or New Year, and even though safety concerns have limited their use, it's still a big moment. When I lived in Beijing, I was invited to my friend's grandfather's home. After dinner, we walked into the courtyard in our heavy winter coats, lighting a few boxes of fireworks to celebrate new beginnings, to remind us of the importance of family, and to frighten away any evil spirits. And it's not just the main day of the new year. This most important of Chinese holidays lasts 15 days. So you'll hear the crackle of fireworks, especially on the eve, first and last days, and the fifth day, which honors the god of wealth. The sound of fireworks is one of the happiest associations I recall from my life in Beijing. And that's just it. Fireworks, as much as the color red, is central to the culture of over a billion people, those who live in China and equally members of the Chinese diaspora in London, Melbourne or Buenos Aires. Weddings are another occasion where if the couple can afford to, fireworks are set off to bring joy to the new union. But of course, while fireworks are intrinsically Chinese by invention, origin and celebration, they are also a gift for all humanity to share. At the stroke of midnight, you can see and hear fireworks in major cities globally and in China where they came from. Happiness is an emotion we all share, and to think that it began with a man called Li Tian, in a town called Liuyang, in a province called Hunan, in a culture called China is pretty special. Wherever you are, and in this pandemic especially, may there always be joy and purpose in all our lives. I am James Chow, you're watching The China Current. Follow us on social media at The China Current.